All right, everybody over on YouTube. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little different than I normally do. We're going to be going over some tips and tricks to help out newer people in the way of the hunter. If you come from games like Hunter Call the Wild, you're going to realize this game's a little harder. And it doesn't just kind of hand you stuff <clears throat> as easily as Hunter Call the Wild did. Everything was behind level walls, and uh, you had to level up, the animals constantly called out to you, there was visible tracks everywhere. And it was kind of easy, kind of handed you everything you needed. This game, I mean, besides your hunter sense, which at the beginning of the game is honestly not that, not that easy, not that good. <laughs> Seems like Grandpa's my biggest fan. I don't think I've actually touched Seems these like posters Grandpa's before. My biggest fan. That's funny, way the hunter. The basement's still locked. Been a mystery since 2002. Okay. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So this game does not exactly hand you things. The animals don't call out to you. You actually need to physically, like, look around for the animals. Even down to tracking them is pretty difficult in this game. If you're not used to doing it. Like, if you don't have some premise of hunting IRL, or at least know what you're doing, you're going to struggle. So, here today, I am going to help you out a bit with that. Tip number one is do your objectives. Do your missions. This game does not have a level wall. So, the way you get better guns and progress is by doing your missions. Do your objectives. Do the little story missions. Do the little side missions. You can see over in the top right, they all have a reward for doing them. Like, this one will pay me 1300 This will pay 950 This will pay 950 That pays 150 200 So, you're getting paid... We're basically doing what you're already going to be doing anyways, which is hunting. You're going to... I know everybody just wants to get out there. And they just want to run the missions. They, like, they don't... They just want to go hunt. They don't care about missions. They just want to go hunt. No one wants to, like, oh, look at this. I have to go greet my old friend. Or I have to go to the mailbox. I just want to get out and hunt. That's what I bought this game for. That's what I want to do. I don't want to do missions. I don't want to go to the shooting range and all that, but look, this is all giving you starter money. And that gets you into buying your first gun. The first gun the game makes you buy is the 7mm Mod 8. This one right here. And this is pretty mid-tier for deer. This will work on your mule deer and your whitetail deer. It's definitely better than the 243. You can uh, actually go to your encyclopedia, which we'll, we'll talk about this later. And it will tell you a little bit of history about it. <clears throat> and it will give you a little bit about the gun. Even, you can even go look at the ammo it shoots. Like, it's the 243. You can see the breakdown of how the bullet drops out to 500 yards. I don't know what that is in meters. I don't, I don't do meters. And there's the 7mm weight. See, the bullet drops a little bit more, but it's a heavier round. See, it even says in the name, it's one of the best deer cartridges ever conceived. Rifle loads provide solid accuracy, improving and consistent for a wide variety of medium to big game. So it's better than your typical 243. 243 is more accurate. 
and it says it's commonly used for black-tailed deer, pronghorns, and mule deer with heavier rounds. It is equally suited for varmint hunting. So this will get you like your 243 will be like your early gun for hunting like the honey badger, the fox, and it can take deer with a well-placed shot. But this is going to be your main deer rifle starting out. So do your missions. That's tip number one. Do the missions. Earn the money. It's a fast, it's super fast way to level up. I mean, once you actually get to like the story missions outside of the like <clears throat> the early campaign stuff, you actually start making some decent money for these. Like there's 800, there's 700, there's 1,000. 700, 850, like you make a decent amount of money, plus you get the money for harvesting the animals that it wants you to do. If it's one like this, like it's 850 and it wants you to kill two deer without hard shotting them. That's simple enough. You're going to be out there hunting the deer anyways. So you just throw this mission on. You go out and hunt the two deer. You make probably, you know, anywhere between like a hundred to three hundred dollars for a deer depending on the grade and how good it is. So let's just say you get 150 for both, so that's another 300 on the 850, you're gonna make over 1100. That's easy money. You're already out there hunting the deer, so why not just throw the mission off? Probably number two is be patient. This game is a lot of listening. Just waiting and looking and listening. You have to be patient because you need that well placed shot. If you're not taking your time with your shots, you're going to be doing a lot of tracking, and this game is much harder to track it. If you get a well placed long shot, the blood will even tell you that they're only going to run for about 50 yards. And with that, I'm going to tack on, like, this will be like tip number 2.5. Because it kind of ties in with your being patient and taking your well-placed shot. Is after you shoot the deer, do not immediately chase it. Hunt your goal the wild, the deer will just keep running until it drops. It's not the case in Way of the Hunter. In Way of the Hunter, the deer will actually bed down after it runs so far and feels like it's safe, like it's not being pursued. The deer will lay down until it finishes bleeding out. <clears throat> so it'll only run that 50 yards if you're not chasing it. And then it'll just lay. It'll just lay down. And it'll take it like probably 30 to 45 seconds to bleed out, depending on how well you hit it. So you don't want to immediately, okay, I shot this deer, now let me just sprint at it. Because now the deer is not going to bed down. It knows it's being pursued. It can hear you thumping behind it. And it's going to continue to run. It's not going to bed down. You're going to have to track it longer. And this game doesn't give you XP for tracking like Hunter Call of the Wild did. It just doesn't. There's no real level system. It's basically money. Money to get everything. So you know, you just have to be patient. This game is a lot, a lot of patience. It's just like real hunting. It's one of the more realistic simulators I've honestly played. Hunter Call of the Wild's a little more arcadey. You just kind of run and gun. You can drive up on four wheelers and jump off and just you know, kind of quick scope the deer. It doesn't really matter. They're gonna die. And the AI in that game aren't the most intelligent. You can normally back them into like a canyon and they're stuck there. This game's not the case. These deer will not make a noise. Like those pheasants weren't making a noise until I walked up on them. Now if I'd had my shotgun, I still could have got a couple of them before they took off. But the animals don't make a lot of noise. But you have to really pay attention and really just kind of stop. Get your binoculars out. They're 
The binoculars are super important in this game. Don't you go all the wild, I don't even have the binoculars in my one of my ten slots. Because I don't need them. My character's high enough level, I can spot with my... We're just gonna ignore this bird. He's... He just wanted to be on camera, he wanted to be part of the video, I respect it. He's clout chasing. If I had any clout to chase. But this game's a lot more about patience. Like I said, Hunter Girl of the Wild. I don't need my binoculars. This game, you need them. You're gonna use them a lot. There's no real spotting to know the trophy rating of the animals without your binoculars. So when you go in to your binoculars and you see a herd of deer, or pheasant, or fox, whatever you're hunting at that time, you want to, you know, pop up your binoculars, and then you want to hit whatever button for you if you're on, you know, PlayStation and Xbox. It's probably triangle on PlayStation, it's Y on Xbox. I think your hunter sense is Q on PC, if I remember correctly. You want to hit your hunter sense, your vision will go a little darker because you're using your sense. But then when you put your, your square in the middle there on each deer, it'll give you their trophy rating. So you want to you wanna use your binoculars, they're very important. Probably tip number three now. Trying to wager which tip I find more important right now. We'll say traps. We'll say need zones. We'll put that at number three. Need zones and animal paths. We'll put that tip at number three. Because again, this is very important. When you're walking around, when you're high enough level you'll be able to walk with your hunter sense but just starting out you have to stop for your hunter sense to work you'll notice we have footprints here and we have this real worn down path this game trail you want to look out for the game trails game trails are going to lead you to need zones and all the animals footprints that you see on these game trails they will constantly be running this the ai in this game are kind of on like a triangle pattern where they will go from resting to eating to drinking and the resting eating and drinking again if you do find an animal you go to your encyclopedia again we're going to be using this a lot you can see the so you're going to be hunting mainly deer at the beginning so white-tailed deer they sleep at 12 a.m they eat at 5 a.m they drink at 9 a.m they go back to resting and laying down midday heat eat again at 5 and then they drink at 10. Same with mule deer. They're about the same schedule. Actually they are the exact same schedule. So you need to find these need zones because when you do find a need zone, like I have a lot of them here, like I can click on this and it will show me the need zone for this particular game trail, this set of mule deer. They're gonna eat here, they're gonna rest here, they're gonna eat here, they're gonna rest here, they're gonna drink here. This is the only place they drink. So if I go to my encyclopedia, I know that mule deer are gonna drink at 9 a.m. and they're gonna drink at 10 a.m. at 10 p.m. So I know, based off of that, that I've only found they drink at this one spot. So I know they're gonna be there they're going to be there at 9 a.m. And they're going to be there at 10 p.m. I know they're going to be out here at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. I know they're going to be eating either in this spot or this spot. I know where they're going to be resting. They're going to either be resting out there or they're going to be resting here. So need zones and game trails are super important. This game trail is always going to lead to a need zone. If you just follow this worn down path, Stop every once in a while with your hunters, your hunter sense. I can walk with mine because I've leveled it up enough. We can analyze this. They eat here. It'll even tell you how often they eat here. They eat here rarely. So I know they're going to use the other spot that I have more often than they're going to use this one. So tip number three is follow game trails. 
use your encyclopedia to know when the animals are eating and drinking, resting, and so forth. And get all those neat zones, get as many as you can, get them marked on the map. That way you know where the animals are constantly going to be. Every morning, this is the first place I come. I come straight down, over to the, right down the hill from the cabin, because I know that they eat and rest and drink over in front of the cabin. And if I don't see them over there, I swing wide, and I crouch walk over to, like, that tree line there, and look over here to this need zone. Because I know they're going to be in one of those two spots. Every morning, like clockwork. Because they have a routine they do every day. <clears throat> so, tip number three, need zones. Need zones and game trails. Tip number four is perks. Make sure you're looking at the perks. Because the perks don't go in any particular order. We'll take a look at them right now. We go to character, we go to perks. The only ones that go in order are the catch your breath. And it doesn't matter what gun you use. Like, you don't have to use a shotgun to level up shotgun. These all level up equally no matter what rifle you use. If you're using a lever action, a bolt action, so use your preferred rifle, it's going to level up all three of these for you. These level up in order just because it's consecutive amounts of holding your breath while you're hitting uh, lungs. Well, this one's not even holding your breath, it's just hitting, hitting vitals. This one does not matter in any order you do it. I mean, most likely you're going to be walking upright more, so you're probably going to get the upright first. This one, you just have to go so far crouched, and then you have to go so far prone. I find I don't go prone that often. So, I haven't really been leveling up the prone. I do crouch a lot, and I walk upright a lot. So these ones are basically done. But there's, there's no order you have to do these in. As you can see, these are out of order down here. Hunter Sense works at 10% greater distance. All I had to do was re interact with 15 animal signs. That's, again, the footprints, the need zones, the droppings, the blood trails when you're tracking. That's all animal signs. Just look at the ground while you're walking around. Stop every once in a while. Use your Hunter Sense on the game trails. And then to get the Hunter Sense works while you're walking, you just have to do 30 of them. Again, down here, play for 12 hours, you get to know the forecast. You get, to, you get a longer forecast. That can be useful to know if it's going to rain or not. Traveling vehicles, I personally don't like the vehicles. They make a lot of noise. I don't like to spook animals. I'd rather walk, I'd rather walk around the map unless I'm like dead set going on a far place that I can't fast travel to. Then I'll take the vehicle if I have to. The calls, they can be a little pain, because the first set of calls you get, if you buy the deer, you can only call in doe. And we'll get into that with, uh, with tip number five. You don't want to kill just all the doe. So you want to get different calls so you're not just killing doe from one species. But yeah, tip number four is do your perks doesn't matter in what order you do them, so you can pick and choose, like, I want this perk over this one, and just work on that one. But do your perks, they're going to help you immensely. Like, being less visible, and being, you know, less noisy, that's huge on not being noticed, and giving you a chance to notice the animal before it notices you. Because these AI are incredibly smart. And they pick up the slightest sounds and scents. Tip number five. This is where we're going to touch back on that, uh, what I was just talking about before, how you don't want to kill just the doe. The way this game's system works, 
It's not like Hunter Call of the Wild. Hunter Call of the Wild just had a percent chance of a rare spawning or a high level spawning. You just had a percent chance. Now, I'll display this uh, using your Hunter Sense and see how it, that is a female call. We have a one star trophy buck. He's an adult. So he's an adult. By the time he reaches mature, he might hit a two star. He's not that big of a deal. But the way this works is if I kill off all these doe, this herd will no longer have doe, and they're not going to reproduce. Then I'm going to be in trouble, because then that's going to throw out the balance of the these are white tailed deer, the white tailed deer population. If I kill just all the low tier bucks and I leave the high tier ones, I leave the trophies. <laughs> As much as we all want to shoot the trophies, if I leave the trophies to, you know, repopulate, do their thing, they will make more high tier bucks for me. But if I kill all the high tier bucks off, and I only leave the low tier, crappy one star, two star bucks, that's all I'm going to have on my map. I can, you control the ecosystem, you control what you're able to hunt. And again, with our patience here, and zeroing, if you use your hunter sense while you're holding your breath, it's going to tell you how far that shot is, which is trying to tell me it's because of the tree. It's trying to tell me it's only three yards, which I respect. Take your time. Hold your breath. Wait for that good shot. <laughs> Get right behind that front shoulder, you're going to hit the lungs every time. Now again, we're going to be patient. You know, back to that, back to that step where we, step two, where we said patience. We need patience. We don't immediately want to chase them down. We know roughly where we shot her. We can see the blood. You can mark it with your marker if you need to, to mark the blood to help you find it. We're just going to sit here a minute. We're going to relax. We're going to chill. We're going to let her do her thing. She's going to go lay down. She's going to bleed out. We're just going to chill here a minute. But back to back to tip number five. We keep getting sidetracked. I have ADHD. I apologize. I get sidetracked very easily. Tip number five is you affect the ecosystem. Back to what I said. Like, I just shot that doe there. Now, I was trying to get my call rating up, and if I go get her, that's going to put my call perk up to where I'll be able to call the young bucks in, the low-tier young bucks, <clears throat> which is what I want, because I want to take them out. If I take out the young, low-tier bucks, I'm going to have nothing but high tiers to keep repopulating, and then I'm going to get those four-star bucks and five-star bucks, and I'm constantly, that's all that's going to be on my map. I'm going to have way less one-star bucks when they reach maturity. Now again with that same thing, is if it's a young buck and it's one star, I don't necessarily want to kill a young buck that's a one star because he still has a lot of life left. He still has his adult stage and then his mature stage where he could end up being a two or three star buck over his lifetime. Sometimes when you use calls, it found out to make sure you got walk slow and you just have to tap sprint and then off again and it'll let you move at normal speed. Hopefully that glitch is fixed soon. But bugs and glitches are another video. But now we, you know, we were patient, we waited long enough. Back to that step 2 and like 2.5, just being patient. She should be bled out by now. We waited, we were patient, she should be bled out. And see, she is, I don't know if it's a fox. We could take the fox, but with 308, it's probably a bad idea. But we're probably going to do it anyways. Just because I'm going to prove a point here on why you should use the right caliber, that's going to be tip number six. Use the right caliber for the gun. 
See, she has lots of blood. There's air bubbles, air bubbles. Air bubbles and pink blood means that we hit the lungs. We know we hit a long shot. We know we hit that good shot. She's only going to go zero to 55 yards, we'll say. It's, we're just going to round up. So I know she's only going to go a maximum of 55 yards before she lays down if I'm not chasing her. We hit the hunter sense. And we don't see blood right away, but now we see that she ran off this way. Again, if you can't, you know, use it while walking, you just stop, wait for the glow, and then you can keep tracking. So again, it's still, it's pink, lots of blood, air bubbles. We know she's hurt. She's hurt bad. We know she's going to bleed out on us. It's just a moment of fun. Right there she is. She didn't even make it out of the field. But we were patient and waited. And you see, she just laid down there. And she died. She expired. If we would have came over here and chased her down immediately, when she laid down here, she would have got up and tried to keep running. The adrenaline would have kicked in she would have kept moving. We got a double long shot. Perfect. Now on to tip six of using the right caliber. Using the right tier weapon. Because this is where it matters in the hunt screen. You see that you lose so much meat based on where you shoot the animal, how good your shot was. You lose so much meat. You're going to lose meat even if you use the right caliber. You're just going to lose significantly less meat. Because the way this game works, you get paid market price because you're selling to your grandfather's restaurant. You're selling, like, your grandfather's business is selling meat to restaurants, not your grandfather's restaurant. Sorry. So you're selling the weight of the deer based on how much meat you get and the price at the current market is how much money you're going to make for each animal. You can see weight to sell. I have almost 90 pounds to sell. And it's $1.59 a pound, so I make $143. I used a tier 5 rifle. This is a tier 5 animal. Oh, see, I almost messed up. This is again. I'm glad the game warned me. Do those objectives. I forgot that I need to hunt white tailed deer from a hunting stand. Your quests can't be in the background. When you do your quests, they have to physically be active. It was warning me right there if I would have harvested that deer that I shot from a tree stand without having this quest active, it would not have given me the one out of three. So make sure you check your quests before you pick up your animal and don't be a dummy like me. Now we have one out of three. But, now, see, the fox, I believe, we can check the encyclopedia, is only, I believe, a tier two animal? Oh, it's a tier three animal. So our rifle is too big. Because if we go to firearms, we have a 308 on right now. It's for hunting tier five. So it is going to weigh significantly more meat than if I shot this with the correct tier rifle. But for some reason it says I shot it twice, which I respect that I shot this twice. This must be a fox I wounded a long time ago. But see, this is a 21 pound animal, and because I shot it with a tier 5 rifle, I wasted 19 pounds. I'm making four dollars because I didn't use the right caliber. Caliber is very important. Using the right thing for the right animal. So for that animal, I should have used probably the 223. Yeah, the 223 is a tier three weapon. This is what you should be using for the fox and the honey badger on this map, on the starter map. You should buy the 223 if that's what you want to focus on and hunt the smaller game. If you want to get into bigger games such as Moose and Bear, 
They are tier 6. You need the 338 Lapua. Or you need the 300. I have the 300 in my second slot. That is this big beautiful gun right here. So caliber is very important because that is going to help you make more money efficiently. If you're just out here blasting all the feet with a tier 6 rifle, you're going to be wasting a lot more meat and you're going to make less money. So use the right caliber to make your shots count. Honestly, that's probably it for tips and tricks right now. If you can do those five things, you'll be successful. So just to reiterate, you gotta be patient. That's tip number two. Tip number two is be patient. Do your quests. Use the right caliber. Get all the need zones and game trails you possibly can. Use your binoculars. Binoculars are lifesavers. They will tell you everything you need to know on the animals if you use your hunter sense while looking through the binoculars. They will give you all the details you need. And yeah. I know I'm forgetting one, but my ADHD brain is just so far off track now. It's just it's just gone. <laughs> But if you do those, just those tips and tricks, it's going to help you immensely. It's going to help you... Oh, perks. Perks was the other one. Do your perks. Do your perks that suit your style of hunting. Don't feel like you have to go out here if you're not going to be using Prolon. Don't feel like you got to sit out here and belly crawl for seven, seven kilometers. If you're not going to use prone that often, if you're not trying to you know, get point blank on animals, why are you going prone? Because that perk, 50% you know, less visible silent and move and slower movement in prone, that's only while you're prone. That's not going to help you in, when you're, you know, crouching or standing. <clears throat> I'm not going to personally go prone that often, so I'm not worried about leveling these perks up. But you do crouch up to animals to get a little closer, maybe crouch into a bush to do your calling and stuff. Um, the eagle eye is super important. The walk and sense I find super important, so I'm not constantly having to stop while I'm tracking. So just do what is important to you. If you guys can think of any other tips and tricks, make sure you let me know. Drop them in the comments. And I will try to include them in an updated video, maybe when we get more content in the game. Um, thank you guys for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. Drop a comment if I missed anything that you feel is super important. And I will catch you guys in the next one, man. Peace.